Welcome back to the 2024 Women's Basketball Big 12 Media Days. I am Missy Heydrich, and we are now joined by the contingent from Baylor, Coach Nikki Cullen, in her fourth season with the Bears. They are 20th straight year. This program has started the season ranked in the AP preseason poll. They come in at number 12, along with her senior guard, Jada Walker, junior guard forward, Dariana Littlepage Bugs, and senior center, Aaron. Annette Vonley. Welcome, ladies. And Coach, three years now for you in the Big 12. It has looked different, actually, in each of those years. Um, as you think about this third, this season, and the new look, how has your team prepared in Waco, and what is the expectation as you move forward in this new league? Yeah, I think we had a really motivated offseason. Um, I think coming off a of Sweet 16 run, also... Um, you know, being so close to an elite eight and a one possession, I think it motivated us in the off season. I also think it was a very, very good off season for, for us because we weren't planning a foreign trip. We weren't, you know, we really got to dive in into skill development, um, played a lot of two on two, three on three, and really broke the game down um, to get us ahead. We had so many returners that we could really, really focus on skill development. That momentum, you mentioned that Sweet 16 appearance and advancing into the NCAA tournament. It does a lot of things for you in terms of confidence, but does it give this group an edge, and how have you used that maybe as a motivator? Well, I think we, we showed them clips of um, the mistakes that we made late in the game and the difference and being a Sweet 16 and Elite 8 team can be one possession, can be two possessions. And so it's about focusing. It's about focusing on the details. Um, it doesn't matter if that's at the offensive end from an execution perspective or the defensive end in terms of scouting report defense, really trying to dive this team into um, being good from the beginning at a lot of the details that so often you don't get to till later in the season. Details do matter. Um, with that said, let's talk a little bit about these young ladies next to you. Senior guard Jada Walker, you started Every game in your first year at Baylor, you were, led this team in steals. Most will remember a career-high 28 in the NCAA tournament against Virginia Tech. Uh, you found your role with this team, and it didn't take long. What did you learn about yourself in this first year playing for coach, and what have you wanted to focus on moving into year two? Um, I really just learned that I can tap into another side of myself that I didn't know. Um, I was always like player on the team so being older now and stepping into more of a leadership role um, as a point guard and developing as that point guard and, and and finding where other people are getting them into their best shots to score and then um, going off when I need to was the main thing um, and then just going into this season just continuing to develop um, developing my shot developing my passing my defense just small things that I can work on to improve to be better for my teammates well you're one of many point guards that we have had up here already today and we like to say point guards are like quarterbacks they can do a little bit of everything and they see everything so you absolutely do that junior guard forward Dariana little page bugs a 2024 all big 12 honorable mention 18 double figure scoring games you had a fantastic freshman year and another stellar sophomore season as you move into the junior year You've seen a little bit of everything now, probably from defenses. What have you been preparing and working on in the off season to get ready for this year? Just a little bit of everything, but I think kind of main focus is soaking in um, the information from the seniors. Um, you know, a lot of them are leaving, but um, playing into that role that'll that'll be something I do next year. So just taking knowledge from them um, is honestly one of my biggest takeaways, and always just. The little details, like as Nikki said, like we watched film from uh, last year's games, and uh, we want to be better. Um, so just really focusing on those details and just setting individual goals to reach, but really just kind of tapping into a leadership role and really soaking in that information so I can use it next year. That makes a ton of sense. And leaders, everybody need, we could use more of them, actually. We all all could. Uh, Ernette Vonley, preseason co-newcomer of the year, preseason all Big 12. You come to Baylor from the University of Colorado, now actually a 
member, another fellow member of the Big 12. Um, tell us why Baylor was the right choice for you, and what is it about this program that stuck out and you wanted to be a part of it? Um, there was a lot of reasons, but I'd say the main two were just the coaching staff and my teammates. Um, I think we have the best coaching staff in the country, just a ton of knowledge, experience that they pour into us every day. So we just get better every single day playing under them. And then my teammates, um, we just have a lot of good chemistry. We get along on and off the court, and it just makes playing with each other that much easier. What is it that you will bring in terms of your game to this team? For those that are in the Big 12, have seen Baylor, they're going to say, well, this is a new face on the roster. What is it you're bringing to the floor for the Bears? Um, I think just a dominant physical post presence. Um, somebody's going to set good screens, be able to finish around the rim, um, rebound. Just add that touch to our team because we already have a ton of amazing guards. So I'm just, just filling in, in that role. A little bit of everything. That's a good thing. All right. I would open it to our friends out here in the media. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We've got one here in the front. Matthew Poston's Heartland College Sports. You, Aaron had kind of touched on it a little bit. When you think about last year's team compared to this year's team, and you think about the teams that you're competing with to win this conference championship, it would seem like she's kind of the differentiator that could help get you guys over the top. Would you agree with that? Uh, certainly a priority in the portal um, was adding size. You know, this is a league full of elite centers. Um, at a time when you're starting to see all the way up to the top levels, Centers run to corners and shoot threes. You know, this is a league that's full of players that get paint touches. And so I thought it was important that we could play one-on-one -on -one, uh, against the Lees and the Crooks and the Sedona Princes of, of the league um, and could hold our own, you know, could throw it there and, and get to that way as well. Um, certainly how we play, we get paint touches. We may get them off the bounce. We're going to get them off the cut. Now we get to add that layer of of getting the ball there uh, with a post feed. So um, it was a huge, huge important thing for us. Um, and, and we were just really lucky uh, to end up with Airnet. I think we have a question right here in the front. Cindy Brunson, NBC Sports, Arizona Women's Basketball. Nettie, this is for you. At Colorado the last couple of years, you had to hustle to get fans in this seats and get them excited about Buffalo women's basketball. That will not be the case at Baylor. A brand new facility to play in, fans lined out the arena. Was that a big part of your decision to transfer and move schools just to have that very women's basketball centric environment? Oh, I think it's definitely just 10 times more fun and exciting when you're not feeling like you have to beg people to like support all the hard work that you do so I think it's definitely a plus and an advantage that in Waco like Baylor women's basketball is really loved and appreciated so it's going to be exciting to get into foster and in like our first game and just see so many faces in the seats so that definitely was a factor too. Coach I would ask you it's uh, something that a lot of coaches have already talked about today but because of the grind of the Big 12 and again it looks different you're going to be preparing for new teams new systems etc. How did you approach your non-conference? What were the challenges and the things you wanted to do to prepare this group and put yourself in that position competing for championships? I think the unique challenge of scheduling today is simply the timing. Um, and with the portal the way it is, um, you, you always plan to have the players on your roster, but um, you can't be naive. Um, but certainly you're, you're projecting. And, um, you know, so you want to balance schedule. You want games that, you know, you can play your bench and get um, some depth, you know, and really, really build up your bench. But also you want some games to prepare you um, for teams in, that are in the Big 12. And we have a lot of different styles in the Big 12. I've said that from the minute I took this job. The unique thing about the Big 12 is there's not one, one style. Iowa State style is not the same as Arizona's. Um, and so I think from that perspective, if you try to play against teams in the non-conference schedule that are going to also bring that, you know, so it 
Atlantis for us. We're going to get a lot of really good teams playing in the Credit Scott Classic against the UCLA. We'll really get to challenge ourselves against the top five team. And so um, just, just want us to grow through the non-conference. Um, you know, sometimes taking a hit is the best thing that, to get, you know, your players' attention. Um, but no coach ever wants to lose a basketball game. So hopefully we can grow through wins. And a little fun in the sun, which would be fantastic, right? Well, I want to wish all of you the very best this season. Thank you for being here with us, Coach. We really do appreciate it. And up next, in just a few moments, will be a head coach and student athletes from Oklahoma State.